What's up with featherweight? I'm weirder than you, Norma, mamma mia. I bring this to your attention because we've had four world champions, three full-time champions, and each one at one point was deemed the greatest fighter on the planet. The fifth king of 145, an unstoppable force. 145 and Ily is a hard hitter. And for his first title defense, he'll clash with the seemingly unbreakable wall. Yeah. Have you ever been rocked? Brother, I knock on wood. I mean, probably, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In Abu Dhabi, UFC 308, Max Holloway is looking to recapture his old crown while Ilya, the defending champion, has promised us that he will do to Holloway exactly what he did to the great Volkanovski. I already opened a, a home for all people. Volk, Volk already has his room. I have another one for you. So I'm gonna put you right there after October 26. In the co-main event, Robert Whitaker and Hamza Chemaev are set for another go, and not much has changed. The winner is most definitely the next in line after Strickland, or might even a surface position. We had to endure a few Apex cards to get here, but the tournament was worth it because you are looking at one of the best events of 2024. Welcome to the fighting business. I'm hoping and praying to the MMA gods that this doesn't get the UFC 294 treatment and I'll need to blaze through a deeper dive part two with Volk facing Alex Pereira at heavyweight. We already had Sterling pulling out of the event, but the card still looks good with a handful of prominent names. As always though, we'll focus on the two biggest fights, the main and co-main, the old guard versus new blood. And this is how we ended up here. business absolutely amazing one of my favorite new channels going right now Hamza Chemaev versus Robert Whitaker I'll try not to curse while I'm narrating this one let me rewind for a bit and open up some salty wounds this year the UFC debuted in Saudi Arabia and the main event was Robert Whitaker versus Hamza Chemaev big fights so massive and important that I made a quick glance video just for it and literally one second one goddamn second before I posted it and the fight was off a little news here. Unfortunately, uh, Hamza Chemaev is out of the fight next weekend in Saudi Arabia, violently, and I mean violently ill. Chemaev pulled out of the event that was built around him, and it was due to some sickness. Some say it was due to a viral infection. Some say that he overtrained. Whatever the case was, I was disappointed, pissed even, and so was the entire MMA community. Hamza was the guy who fought three times in two months or some shit, and now he can't even be trusted to show up. UFC fight night Saudi Arabia went on though, with Whitaker remaining on the card. The replacement for Hamzat was another hyped prospect, Ikram Aliskerov. Excellent grappler, excellent jiu-jitsu. I saw him training with jiu-jitsu guys, with wrestler guys. Very hard thing to do to take Robert Whitaker, but guess what? If somebody can do that, is Ikram Aliskerov. I can only imagine the hell Whitaker had gone through that week. Training and cutting weight despite not even knowing for sure that you will even be fighting must be utter hell, but Props to Bobby Knuckles because he said yes to a stupid, dangerous fight against Ikram. And when it was time to perform, he dusted him in the first round. Damn, Whitaker looks good. Very strategic, very straightforward, no wasted movement. He took it directly to his opponent. Suddenly, somewhere in America, Strickland grew super worried because with that showing, especially considering the circumstances, Whitaker made a big case for himself as the next title contender. But not even a month after his impressive KO win, Whitaker announced his next fight against Hamza Chemaev. Something about this annoys me. Dana White has buried fighters a lot more for a lot less, but somehow, Hamza is still getting a first class treatment and yet another chance to redeem himself. I don't like it but with Dana looking to cash that Saudi money, I'm not too surprised. There's not a whole lot I can say here for Hamzat. He last fought Usman at UFC 294 and just barely won. We haven't seen him since, and it'll be a full year if he makes his return at 308. I can talk about Robert Whitaker though, because against Ikram, he gave us a reminder. We knew Bobby Knuckles was good, but a lot of people forgot that he was dangerous and capable of knocking people out. Pivoted a little bit, whipped the uppercut, boom, literally like Roy Jones and just so lit him the fuck up. That just shows you Robert Whitaker, dude, is just on another level. That first round KO adds a new layer of danger for Hamzat, and if he can't get Whitaker out of there within the first blitz, then we might just see him unconscious in the championship rounds. Yes, this is scheduled for five rounds. The momentum and the activity is on Whitaker's side, while Hamzat, rusty and inactive, will have a lot to prove. And if Hamzat really is as good as he says he is, I'm gonna be champion here. 77 kilo. As much of a monster as his teammate says he is. Come on, understand. You're better than you're better than 
As big of a star as the UFC thinks he will be. I've been in this game my whole life. I've never seen anything like him. He's special, he's different. This is his last chance to prove himself because whether Sean Strickland likes it or not, an impressive victory over a legend like Whitaker and the next big event in Saudi Arabia or Abu Dhabi will be Hamza Chemaya versus Drikas Duplessis for the middleweight title. Ilya Teporia versus Max Holloway. At UFC 276, Max Holloway was bloodied, broken, and defeated for the third time by Alexander Volkanovsky, and his championship dreams, as long as Volk was champion, were put to rest. There's only one other guy out there that's got his number, and it's the champion Volkanovsky. Other than that, he's unfreaking believable. Three defeats to one guy, and there's not much left for you. Holloway's only hope to become champion at 145 was for someone to take the belt from Volkanovsky, and then maybe, just maybe, Holloway would be back in the title picture. And good fucking luck beating that guy. Volk, Aldo, Max, that's kind of my list. Volkanovski has beaten Max Holloway three times. He has also beaten Jose Aldo once. The well-roundedness, the comparison to GSP that we just said, this is something that champions, very few champions have. The GSP is the John Jones to be able to adapt. He is the featherweight goat in my eyes. The other featherweights didn't have a prayer. Holloway, despite having the option of going up to 155, decided to camp at featherweight and instead of waiting for the chosen one to show, he had no problem accepting the challenge from a dangerous contender in Arnold Allen. Heading into the main event, there were some concerns whether Holloway was past his prime, but he handled himself against Arnold Allen, eventually winning a unanimous decision. How do you feel about the victory today? I feel great, I feel great. So everybody who made the bet of me landing 100 more strikes, I take my 10%, thank you guys. <laughs> and actually that was a super impressive W. Took Arnold's UFC donut, as he likes to say, but Volk was still featherweight champion, so it didn't really matter too much. After beating Arnold Allen, Holloway faced the Korean zombie at UFC Singapore and KO'd him in the third round, fight of the night followed by a knockout. Max Holloway had demonstrated that he was still Max Holloway, but... That's why you can't spar anymore, because you're punching there too much. 2-0, oh, about to be 3-0, oh, let's fucking go! And still! That guy was still there, and had recently dismantled Yair Rodriguez in his fifth title defense. As long as Volk held the title, no matter how many featherweight contenders Holloway beat up, he didn't have a chance in hell. At this point, he could only really pray pray for some force of nature to show up and take care of a generational great in Alexander Volkanovsky. You'll do nothing, you'll do nothing, you little fart. Go and sit back down, sit back down. That is how the majority of UFC fans first came to know of Ilya Teporia. His back and forth with a popular name in Patty was likely a calculated move because it got fans interested and they tuned in to UFC 282 to see if he could walk the walk. In the important prospect clash, Teporia dismantled Bryce Mitchell and made clear that he was the prospect at 145. Right now I'm 5-0 in, in, inside the UFC. So in 2023, I wouldn't love to fight for the title directly because I know that I'm the best in the world and that I'm that the number one guy. As his record suggested, Ilya had finishing ability, but was he good enough to go a full 25 minutes against a top contender? That is a hallmark of a future champion. 25 minutes of excellence when the lights are bright and the pressure is on. And Teporia checked that box as well against maybe the hardest hitting featherweight of all time in Josh Emmett. If there were any doubts left that Teporia was the best of all prospects at 145, that main event victory over Emmett proved it beyond a shadow of doubt. There were some discussions about Teporia versus Holloway, but the UFC needed someone for Volk to face, and Teporia was given the title shots. Volkanovski was recently knocked out by Islam, shin to the head, but despite some reservation that he was coming back too soon, he was still Alexander Volkanovski, and while odds were close, many fighters picked him to win. I do lean towards Volkanovski. It's hard to bet against a champion, you know, he's uh, such a dominant champion. Hard to bet against Volk at this point, you know. Deporia gladly embraced the role of the villain and promised to knock Volk out. I'm gonna humble you, I'm gonna show you levels, I'm, I'm gonna walk the floor with you. Almost the entire MMA fandom was hoping for Volk to teach the new guy a lesson and continue his title reign. He had gotten a lot of respect for his two title fights against Islam while Teporia kept talking and talking, pissing them all off. Shut the fuck up! Shut up, dude! But in the main event of UFC 298, despite a good effort from the hero, the villain won. Was Volkanovski compromised? 
probably, but that didn't diminish Tapuria's win as he did exactly what he told us he was going to do and became only the fifth UFC featherweight champion. Undefeated, well-rounded in all facets and vicious as hell, Tapuria looked to be just as good as his predecessors. With Volk dethroned and a new champion at 145, the title road was open for Holloway, but Max had his own problems to deal with outside of 145. At UFC 300, Holloway was set to face Justin Gaethje, a lightweight god of war. This sounded so good yet so bad at the same time, as Gaethje had the power and the technique to actually put Holloway out cold. I just want to ask you, will you break Max Holloway like you did Tony? I will certainly plan on it, but like I said, he will lose my respect if I don't try to fuck him up. I would not respect him one bit if he didn't come in there and try to take my head off. UFC 300 was supposed to be a funeral for Max's career, but so many years into his UFC career with so much damage sustained and so many wars endured, Max Holloway was still the blessed one. Gaethje was not the same after that kick that nearly sent him out of the octagon, and Holloway was one step ahead of him for the rest of the fight, putting on one of his finest performances. But when he was just 10 seconds away from a decision victory, Holloway, as he promised, invited Gaethje, the heaviest handed lightweight on the planet, to meet him in the middle and brawl. He risked his win and won it all with that last second KO. That was a funeral all right, but not for Holloway. That last second KO propelled the already popular featherweight to even greater heights, and the lightweight title was right there for Holloway. We got maybe the biggest fight of the year. On first glance, this matchup is a clash of different striking styles. Holloway is known for non-stop volume, and the longer the fight goes, the worse it gets for his opponents, for the most part. Meanwhile, Taporia is known for power. With 13 finishes in his career, Taporia can finish anyone, but I feel like we've been here before. Every knockout artist that Max faces is predicted to be the one to knock him out. Gaethje was the most promising candidate to do it, and look what happened to him. Maybe Holloway is unbreakable, but then you have Ilya promising that he will be the first one to finish Max, and for a second, you kind of have to believe him. There is no way I'm not going to knock him out. I will be the first one to, to knock him out because every time I, I watch him fight, I'm like, I'm way better than him. The confidence of Taporia is really something. Against Volk, he was so sure of himself that he declared himself the champion before he even stepped in the cage. And he is even more confident now that he is the champion. With the speed and power that he has, I can see why. Because he never faced Ilya Topuria. He never faced El Matador. Faster and definitely more powerful than Holloway. What he couldn't do in 75, 75 minutes, I did in seven. Topuria will bring the pressure and power early as he fully believes that he can finish Max Holloway. He has seven professional defeats, I had zero. The boxing style, clean fundamentals, and the stature of Topuria will definitely take Holloway a while to get used to, and his defense will need to be tight to survive. He's the challenger, I'm the champion. That's why I, 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 I know that I'm gonna knock him out. If he does, like he has always done, and Ilya enters the championship rounds with a guy like Max, we've seen him lead the fight against Emmett, but with every round, Holloway will turn up the volume and pace and push him like he has never been before. Yeah, I'm saying you're back to Hawaii. Wait a belt, go pounds heavier, yeah. thank you buddy. Holloway has made a career out of dragging people into deep waters and drowning them. Can Taporia survive the storm that Holloway inevitably brings in the later round? Max Holloway, uh, he's a beast, bro. Like that, fighting that dude, like you, you have, you have to be on your A game. On paper, this fight is a striker's dream. Holloway's relentless output against Taporia's one-punch knockout power creates a classic battle of volume versus brute strength. But beyond the technical aspect, this is quite possibly the most anticipated fight of 2024. Holloway, the veteran who's fought the best of the best versus Taporia, the undefeated wrecking ball who has climbed his way to the top and still wants more. It's a battle of unbreakable wheels, of youth versus experience, hunger for greatness versus the desire to be great again. And I swear, if this fight begins and Taporia points to the center of the octagon, then this will be the greatest fight of all time. Fight's gonna ring, bell's gonna start, and we're gonna see you point to the center and see if Max is willing to engage you in the middle of the octagon. Since the first second the, the, the fight will, will start, I will point to the ground and I will stay in the middle of the octagon and hopefully you, you will do the same. And we're gonna give, give to the fans the, the most excited first 10 seconds of the mixed martial arts and the UFC issue. This is the last chance for Hamza to prove that he is worth the hype, and with 34 approaching fast, 
it might also be the last hope for Robert Whittaker to keep his championship dreams alive. In the main event, the featherweight Game of Thrones continues with two of the best fighters on the planet, contrasting personalities and athletes, closing out what should be one of the best fight cards of the year. If you're trying to get access to the music playlist for this video and all the previous one, get our thumbnail designs, some editing tips and tricks, and your name as a producer, check out the Patreon right here.